You know what I love? Animation. It's such a fascinating medium that's been utilized in so many creative ways over the years. And that's why this list caught my eye. Rahat Ahmed's curated list of the top 100 animated films as ranked on Letterboxd. I'd love to talk more about animation on my channel and help make more regular content for you guys, and I feel like this is a good way to go about both of those tasks. So I'm going to go through every single entry on this list, maybe even a few that get scooted below the cutoff in the meantime, and talk about them. Sometimes I might have a lot to say, sometimes only a little, but I want to chronicle my journey. And I figure no better place to start than at the very beginning, with the oldest title on the list, The Abenchoya Does Prince and Ahmed, The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. This film is the brainchild of Charlotte Lottie Reiniger. Born in Berlin in 1899, Reiniger was fascinated by the films of Georges Méliès from a young age. While still a teenager, she became entwined in German Expressionism, working behind the scenes in Max Reinhardt's acting troupe alongside Paul Wegner. At the age of 20, she had already made her first animated short, The Ornament of the Enamored Heart. And at the age of 24, she was approached to make a full-length animated feature, which culminated in 1926 with The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. Now some of you might be thinking, well wait a minute, isn't Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs the first full-length animated feature? That came out a decade later, and for a long time I thought so too. However, that's the first cell animated movie, which refers to the celluloid sheets that the characters are animated on. Funny enough, Prince Ahmed isn't really the first animated feature either, but with 1917's El Apostol Lost to History, Prince Ahmed has the honor of being the oldest surviving animated film in the world. Of course, not being the absolute first didn't make it any less risky. Audiences viewed animation as something meant to entertain and delight for only a few minutes at a time. It was unclear whether the medium could even hold their attention for the duration of a feature film. To make sure it did, Reiniger pushed her skills to the limits. From an early age, she had been fascinated with paper craft. Film historian William Moritz noted that she had an astonishing facility with cutting, holding the scissors still in her right hand and manipulating the paper at a lightning speed with her left hand so that the cut always went in the right direction. Her marionettes were fashioned from paper and cardboard and lead, joined with wire hinges, and photographed one frame at a time atop translucent paper or colored foil for effect. Other materials, such as sand and wax and paint, were also employed. Not to mention Reiniger's invention of what she called a trick table, a device upon which she arranged her marionettes. The table illuminated them from behind as a camera hung suspended overhead. Reiniger's trick table is considered a predecessor to Ub Iwerks' multi-plane camera, which was employed in Disney Snow White. Reiniger's ingenuity pushed forward nascent animation technology, and what did it all result in? A mythic, elegant story that brings 1001 Nights to life. Prince Ahmed opens with an evil sorcerer who creates a flying horse. He brings it to the Caliph, who is so taken with the curious beast that he permits the sorcerer to choose any of his treasures to keep. And at that invitation, the lecherous sorcerer claims the Caliph's daughter. Her brother, the titular Prince Ahmed, tries to intervene, but is tricked into climbing upon the beast, which the sorcerer then sends careening into the sky. And thus begins a wild journey where the prince encounters fantastical lands, magical figures, and the famous Aladdin in his lamp, all in a quest of justice. The movie is silent, featuring only a musical score by Wolfgang Zeller, and makes use of intertitles to insert dialogue. But what's remarkable is how very few of these intertitles are used. Even as far back as the 1920s when they didn't have the tomes of animation textbooks we have today, Reiniger understood the importance of visual storytelling. And that story is told with the way the characters move, their gestures. Because her medium limited facial expressions, and oftentimes as characters exhibit no facial expressions at all, emotions needed to be communicated through body language. So she has them move in exaggerated ways, a principle still followed across animation media today. It's a perfectly lean story, telling us exactly what we need to know and delivering it to us with absolute precision. Incredible craft combines with a simple and compelling story for a truly groundbreaking film that I'd recommend for anyone interested in fairy tales, animation, or cinema at large. 
Admittedly, it can be a little tricky to find, and different versions exist that have it subtitled, have it dubbed, or keep just the original German. But I would recommend the subtitled version currently streaming on the Criterion channel, because everyone deserves to see this cornerstone of animation history, and how Lottie Reiniger's ambition and skill set a standard for animated productions even today.